Oh, shit. i got no sound. Now, g'day. Thanks, sunshine. Holy mackerel. All right. That's a big disappointment because I did a really good explanation then on cannabinoids vaping use, but I appreciate it, sunshine. Let's start again. No sound, cease. Good on you. Thank you. Gee, I'm glad I stopped then. Holy moly. All right. Back to it. So you're going to have to sit through that screen. This is the vape. Now I better share the screen. Far out. All right. Sharing. Now I'm sharing. Back to this. So this is the comparison of the cannabinoids at their volatilization temperatures. So at the top here is THCA, 120C, 250F, CBDA, 130, 266, and that's the, still got the acid molecule attached to it. So that's what temperatures you'll get rid of it at, between 60 and 125 to decarb it, the THC, and between 80 and 135 to decarb THC, to decarb CBD, to drop the acid chain off it, so it makes it volatile. So you can get the, the proper effects you want out of it. And then the boiling point here, so if you've got your vaporizer, you will want to get it up to at least 155 or 310F to unlock the THC Delta 9. And then for the CBD, you want it 165 Celsius or 329F, and that unlocks it, CBD. And for the THC Delta 8, you want to go a bit higher, 175 to 347F. And then for those people that age their trichomes, uh, I like to age it because you want that sleepy, good effect to it. You can have different medicinal properties from it, and it's really good. Uh, you get it up to 185 or 365 F. And now the danger one, so benzene. So this has got hydrocarbons and other problematic things that go into it that can be released. And I don't think it's at this temperature from my experience, but I've experienced it from 450 F or... 228 Celsius around that and then it starts the, the vapor goes very thick it goes a different taste to it and my volatile organic compound meter it reacts heavily to it when it goes above 50 parts per million it's a, there's some that's sort of hydrocarbons or VOCs in the air that is dangerous to our human health and my meter goes up to about 500 so if you're having a vape at a very high temperatures, up around those 228 Celsius or 450 Fahrenheit, you've got problems. If you can see very thick smoke or it tastes really odd, uh, you might be getting other things that aren't good for your health. So I would heavily suggest avoiding that. I don't go into it. I know how thick the vapor is and it looks like. I used to get it from chopping up my, material, my after vape material very finely more some pestle and then I'd bake it then because in the middle it used to roast it and get so hot it used to produce these volatile organic compounds so really be careful when you're vaping it now this is the cannabinoids that I showed first and I explained before the reason was to comparison give comparisons of the Celsius to Fahrenheit because the other charts some of the other slides that I've got they don't have the Fahrenheit comparison for North American folk so now I can back to it Thank you, peoples, for advising me on the no sound. That sucks. I've done that a few times now. Yes. All right, back to it. Apparently, what sorts the orders? Apparently, someone's saying I did some grow in an esky on Reddit. Is a lie, and I'm not on Reddit. Okay. That's, I can say, I don't, I'm not into drama and Hook causes drama. I don't like hearing or reading stuff about him. He's dramatic and that's all he's got. So I don't get into that side of things. Sorry. Uh, main Green, girl, how you going, Main Green? What's the auto? Yes, I'm just going down the list to see what's going on. Only use that. Elbow, small tubes. Hey, cough, cough, cough from his um, dab rig. Yes, I hope you got your tasty flavours still, mate. I know you would. Howdy from Hamos Outdoors. G'day. Mick S. How you going, Mick S? Does cannabis even vaporise at 120 Celsius, asks Sunshine. 
Uh, yeah, it's let's let's get back into it. Show another chart. Good good stuff. So back to share screen. There's so many buttons to click. Present. Share screen. So now I can go back to the other end of the spectrum, which I was talking about. So this is the volatilization of the different terpenes. So I just went through the cannabinoids, and you can have a comparison with for you North American folk uh, to see what's up. I'll go through some other slides with the other comparative ones for Fahrenheit later. But you can see down the bottom here, if you've got CBG is volatile at 52F sunshine and 126 Fahrenheit, it's also OC mean. Oh, there it is above it. No, that's lower. That's around the same. It's around 50. Um, and uh, CBG and OC mean are one of our lowest cannabinoids and um, terpenes, and they are reactive at that temperature. So if you're going to, I did that with my quick drying method. If you raise it above that, you're going to miss out on this medicinal properties. And also if you smoke above that, what you'll do, you'll only consume these terpenes down the bottom and cannabinoids, and the rest will remain in your green leaf material that you have. So you can either use it later or some, you can extract it, which I've done too. The, for instance, if you want the, only the osimine or the alpha pinene, pinene, which is the monoterpenes, which is really at the start, you can just get these lower te temperatures. And if you need pain relief, like myrcene is a very, very strong pain reliever, you can just get it up a little bit higher. All right, I need pain, so 166. And, oh, shit, I need some CBD. So, well, 177, you can go up a little bit before, but higher up. And it does. It does have the, I just realised then, it's got the Fahrenheit next to it in green. There you go. You beauty. Yeah, but OC means wrong. Um, all right, another chart. This is a cool chart. So this has a little bit more explanation. So we go down the bottom here. So it starts right down. This is only in Fahrenheit. So if you're Australians, uh-oh. Um, so the, the effects are mellow. So if you combine, the entourage effect is when you combine all your terpenes and cannabinoids to give you the outcome of that effect. So if you do it at a low temperature, you're going to get a really mellow effect. It says this chart. And you get a more intense effect when you burn it at a higher temperature. Uh, I don't agree with that. Well, I haven't tried it at low temperatures, but I know from the trichomes that you, um, if they're very amber and aged or even aged into CBN from THC, that you're going to get a more intense, um, sleepier, actually more intense sleepier feeling. This says mellow. So anyway, that's my experience and I'm just interpreting this chart at the same time. So if you go up here to 450 Fahrenheit or about 228 Celsius, it's burnt. That's combustion. That's which releases all the hydrocarbons and the, can, um, the bad problematic terpenes that will cause internal problems for humans. So you should never go up at that. And that's what I was trying to explain before about the safe practices for vaporizing. So that's why it's a lot better than combusting, which is in a joint or through a bong, because you'll get the effects of this burnt stuff, which is a lot like plants have uh, semi, they have hemicellulose, cellulose and lignin. That's what's made up of them. So you're consuming that. So as medicinal cannabis farmers we are, we are only interested in the trichomes, which are on top. And there's also different various places in the plant which stores these terpenes and cannabinoids as well, like vacuoles, dermal tissue, uh, edioblasts, there's other things like that. Next chart. Um, THC tail matters. Yeah, this was that was a while ago. Remember, I was talking about how you, if you chop the tail, that's how you synthetically change this THC molecule. So this just explains it how. So by, I'm not going to go into it, but that's just by doing it. It's a bit of chemistry, and they do that. That's how they synthetically make the different cannabinoids. Now they just do this in the lab, add some chemicals, and it reacts and changes it, forms different carbon chains, and you get the different cannabinoids from it which has been outlawed in three U.S. states in USA. Here's another chart that shows if you want to release pinene, pinene, it's that temperature. 
It's found in other non-cannabinoid and non-medical cannabis plants. And these are some cannabis varieties that it's, it's cultivars that it's in. Pink Kush Daydream 8K47 has a lot of pinene it reckons. Mercine for pain, you want granddaddy purple. Amnesia or train wreck, amnesia. Okay, more indica varieties have the medicinal mercine for pain. Carophyllene's good for pain too. Uh, linalool, that's a antispasmodic. That's good for me for my epilepsy. So it's found predominantly in lavender or in some cannabis varieties. Hosimine, there you go. It's found in Sensi Star, Durban Poison, Silver Bubble. <laughs> uh, that'll do. Turpinol, yeah, it smells like. Anyway. What's some other charts? That's right, there's one right at the start here. Was it from this one? I think there's a few back from this one. Yeah, this is it. So this has got some, the latest, when it first came out in 2001, MC Partland and Russo did a study in 2001, and they found all these temperatures for different cannabinoids, flavonoids, and terpenes. And then from chemistry studies from the pub chemistry, they did a test, extensive tests in 2015, and found that there was an update on some of the temperatures. So, uh, sublime spelling point. So what can I really say here? Um, this is a similar chart to what it says before. So if you want the different properties, like the mercine and caryophylline are good for pain. The uh, linalool is antispasmodic. So you can, dial in your vaporizing device at those specific temperatures to get those specific effects. So if you were gonna do it for your mercine and beta carophylline for pain, you go up to, well, what's that? It says Celsius, I'll talk in, so 170 Celsius, and you should be able to combust, or not combust, vaporize those pain compounds. And then if you're not gonna still smoke it, you can keep it, and if you look under the microscope, you'd see that the trichomes are still there. They're not shriveled up and shrunk. So there's still oil inside of them, which contains other prop and cannabinoids, flavonoids, and terpenes. So you can either extract it or you can keep it for later. And yeah, I'd extract it. But that's another example of how you can safely use your medicinal cannabis for good properties. I think that's it. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about pterocarbons, all that stuff. Back to it. How do I stop sharing? No, not in broadcast. Oh, you know, did I not share all that? Oh, no. It says allow screen to be shared here. Oh, are you kidding? This has been a horrible stream. Sorry, people. Fair income. I just crossed off some stuff too. I don't know where I got up to. Stop sharing. I don't know where I got up to. I'm really sorry about that. Can someone fill me in on where my last slides were, please, so I can continue off again? Oh, mate. I'll scroll up a bit. Sunshine, it was up to his temperature. It's 121. There it is there. Oh, G'day, you know, King B. Fine. How you going? I'm having problems here, mate. I don't. I don't reckon anything will vaporize at 120 using a mighty. It's advised by the Dutch Cannabis College to vaporize between 190 Celsius and 210 Celsius. I vaporize at 193, 205, and two and 223 is my sesh of three bags. You're not sharing your screen. Thanks, Mick. 9.44. That was six minutes ago. Oh, that's ages ago. Uh, okay. That's well said. Okay. I'm going to go back and I'll start. I'll just scroll down. Everyone just... It's been horrible, clay boots. 
is this the master university no i study all over the world mate on all online clay boots asks is this from mc masters university ontario no i study just different cast classes all over the world online and do very medicinal cannabis i study plant science soil science and in microbiology and i pull out all of the related topics for cannabis all right i'm going to try and start again so i was right up near the end i've got to share screen first again oh my god this is terrible all right share screen allow this time oh gosh i'm so sorry so i was right up here at the end This is at the start, so you haven't seen this one. I'll just start off with this one. I don't know where I got up to, sorry. This is a study that has been done, just shows the advancements in technology. How from McParland and Russo in 2001 did a study of the cannabinoids, flavonoids and terpenes to see what they unlocked at. And this is from the PubCam, very intense studies that were done on updates and you heard everything what i said so this is the charts related to it so you can see down here the uh, carophylline mercine for the pain and i was saying you'd want to try and get aim at 170 celsius 330 fahrenheit uh what was another example i think that'll do but this was the chart that i was explaining about the differences how they've updated the studies another thing too they've updated was the plant nutrient require um elements that for a plant like in 2010 it was 17 in 1970 it was 16 then they added nickel and then it went to 17 and 2010 and then 2008 what was it 19 it went up to 19 yeah it went to 19 oh that's pretty funny and then in 2022 my latest soil cast did uh, drop down to 17 because they had two elements that are floating that are var some varieties needed and some cultivars don't need it and you know i'm going to get back geez what a living shame stop sharing right up what's some questions look at down the right down there Scholarships available last year at McMaster's. Nice one. Oz Hashman, how you going, Oz Hashman? How come Aussie CC has only four likes? Uh, I don't worry about that stuff, mate. It's because there's a lot of haters out there. That's probably why. But how you going, Oz Hashman? G'day, Terence. How are you? Uh, oh, yeah, there's a question. I have a question it's from Terence McKenna down under. How does the cold interact with trichomes? Well, trichomes separate from the green leaf material at between one Celsius and three degrees Celsius or about 33 Fahrenheit till about 37 Fahrenheit. So that's, yes, that's exactly what I'm getting to. Yes, it's related to bubble hash. So that's how you, that's the temperature you wanna get it down to if you're trying to separate the trichomes from the green leaf material. A bit of a problem in, I lived in Canada for five years and it gets cold outside. And if you are transporting in the Arctic and you're touching the bags or they're vibrating around in the back, that means some trichomes are actually separating if you haven't put them in um, air proof containers. If they're loosely sitting in there and gotten down to that temperature, you'll just rupture them all off. So grab your microscope out and you'll see that there'll be a lot of stalked capitate without the trichomes sitting on the top. So that's a way that you can tell. So you can look at your material and you can see if it's affected by the cold or if someone's done a mild temperature extraction. Uh, I used to take my microscope into the dispensaries into Canada and used to look at that and try and find that and um, used to see this. And how are trichomes affected by the cold when making bubble hash? So if you haven't got it down to that temperature, they're not going to release and they're still going to be stuck to the green leaf material. So it's you can look at your wash afterwards, 
through a microscope again, and then you'll see quite a lot of little glowing things back at you. And that means that you've still, you haven't done it properly or you haven't gotten down to the right temperature and agitated it enough to release them from their green leaf material. It's, um, yeah, one to three degrees Celsius. How's that? I don't really want to show charts on it. On that one, Taz tell. Oh, uh, I remember from yesterday, Terry, uh, we'll do Aussie auto. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just wondering, Terence McKenna says, I was just wondering about when making bubble hash with live plant material after being fresh frozen, will it ruin the glandular heads of the trichomes, rupturing them and bursting? No, because they won't actually burst when they're frozen. The fresh frozen is the best way to retain all the trichome, the trichome properties because when it reacts with oxygen, oxygen is starting to break things down. It's a really good electron acceptor and it reacts chemically and starts to change things, change structures very fast. So by the live resin and by fresh frozen, it's the best way to, uh, you can notice it, I've smoked some live resin in Canada and it's amazingly, it's like as if someone's enriched it with terpenes, but it's not. It's because it was just the post-harvest production practices was perfect. They've maintained it, which is exactly how it all, everybody should get their medicinal cannabis from doing that. Um, thank you. Okay. It seems like I've gone enough about it. There's a little bit of a thank you, he says. Okay, sweet. I'm glad I helped. Amos, so is dry sift better than ice water extraction? Uh, no, mate. I've done this. Ex Amos, that's what Amos asks. No, it's – the answer is no. <laughs> I've done this two ways to find it out. Back in the day, I uh, I don't really want to talk about what uh, – how can I explain that? Um I've done both ways and using the microscope as well. And if you build a, I did it so long, oh, I can't even say that. Um, they, oh, what's your question again? So is dry sift better than ice water? No, it's not. It'll, it's the dry sift from when you touch it on it, on the screen, it unlocks different plant materials and they break off as well. So if you look in the microscope afterwards, you'll see there's a lot of impurities that are in the dry sift method. But ice water extraction is pure as. It's done through the filter bags and there's no, all the materials wet. So there's no types of things that are gonna break off. It's tip, it's only a temperature extraction where you're getting the, the cannabis, medicinal cannabis down to near just above freezing and then it separates from agitation. And then you're filtering it out through the bag and that's how you're getting it. So um, I've done this pretty extensively actually, the, both those ways. I actually, I, not both, I've done the second one. I only do bubble water, ice water extraction uh, because it's the best way. That I've 20 years ago, I played around with some dry sift methods and looked at it and it was just poor, very poor. So I went back to, not went back, I stuck with um, the dry ice. I did it so long ago that those bags weren't even around. I had to make my own bags. Yeah, my micron bags. Good question. Hey, Moss. Sort of in the extractions. Uh, this is an open medical cannabis topic today, but we're sort of going around the volatilization temperatures and the extraction temperatures. So it seems to be pretty related. So thank you, everybody, for keeping a good effort up. Uh, Terence, all right, hit the like chat. She is, hey, Monty, how's it going, Monty? Thank you, thoughts, hey, good on you. Nice that I could help. Uh, Monty, uh, Nick, Jeffrey Day, how you going, Jeffrey Day? I didn't say you'd get A to you. Nice to see you. Um, is there anything else that I could, this might be a short show, no questions? I think I've discussed, I've, pretty much gone through all I want to go through. Maybe I should share a screen again, just in case. I'll go through some more slides. No, not share that. Right. 
slides from nine. So I'm just trying to share screen on the on these just to see if I missed any before when I was talking about it with you. So I know I kept going on without showing this. That's, this is another screen I showed with the pinning, for instance, how it's it vaporizes at that 310F or 155 Celsius. You can get it in non-medicinal cannabis plants. And this is some of the variety the cultivars that it's available in cannabis. And linalool, for instance, is a antispasmodic, which I'm interested in. And that's predominantly out of lavender. Or you can get it in some other kosher kush or remoulian or some sour kush cultivars, it reckons. That's right. That's what I went on to discuss. OC mean. Yeah, see here, 50 Celsius or 122F with that other chart before. It suggested it was um, double that. So it's not. It's one of the lowest. CBG and OC mean are one of your lowest temperatures. And if you go and raise anything above your green leaf material, if it goes above this temperature, you're losing medicinal properties. So that's including with storage as well. So if it's in the hot car, it's just lost. It's just vaporized off and it's gone because that's how the chemicals work under the temperatures. Cool. That's right. This was the tail chart that I showed, mightn't have showed, but I spoke about a few weeks ago. I couldn't find the chart. So if you want to synthetically change your THC molecule, you can. That's how they do it in the lab by changing the tail. It just gives it different carbon chain properties and it changes it. Remember, this has been outlawed in three states in USA. So don't take this because it's not natural and it's probably its pathways are breaking down, might have other chemical pathways which they've added into it. So stick with medicinal cannabis. This is where I was, I hope I showed this chart. This is the one where I was going through the burnt, how it gets up to and talking about the temperatures where it combusts and it starts to release different gases the cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin in the plants, and that gives you combustion and it's harmful for the body with other hydrocarbons because, remember, cannabis is a bioaccumulant, so it'll attract, it'll um, store other problem biomolecules in the air or in the soil or your substrate. It will store them in the plant. So if you get up to this temperature, you're unlocking them as well. So if you've just grown a crop out um, where it's radiation field, it's probably absorbed some radiation. So when you burn it, you're getting some radiation administered in as an example, which you'd never, ever want to do. Uh, cool. Yeah, and that's where it started at, Brad. So that's the charts that I think I went through. And that was right at the start. Oh, yeah. I don't think I talked about this one. was pretty good. This is just, again, it's just a different chart showing the different properties, though. So if you want your macarophylline, anti-inflammatory, malarial, and gastric mucosa protectant. <laughs> okay. So these people have, like linalool and lavender, they'll have it because they want to get sedative or they want it's an antidepressant or they want it to, to um, help their immune system. This is why medicinal cannabis is so full on because it has can have all these different terpenes in the one plant, not just going after lavender for linalool as an example. So it's very hard to prescribe and for the doctors, they can't get their head around it because there's thousands of these different terpenes that they know that when they have, they interact, they give an entourage effect and it might be bad. So some varieties, like they might combine to give the user a uppity effect or a effect where it makes them anxious instead of anti-anxiety. Like with me, I'm caffeine sensitive. So if I was to have uh sativa i don't know sativa um, cultivars they have they get my heart rate going for some reason so i reckon there's something in that like a pinene or a mercine or something that's just reacts bad with my body so i have to go with the hybrids or the definitely indicas i love this is pretty good this would have been good to go through with all the terpenes this is what they are in their molecular structure and what they how they treat so if you've got a problem we've all got problems as we get older my epilepsy for instance so i want linalool because it's an anti-spasmodic anti-convulsant there's other ones that are well that are like that so you should seek out your problem that you have 
uh, anxiety, for instance, or sleep problems, and you look under here and all right, which is a sedative, um, which was a uh, little oil, I think was a sedative. Sedative one. So you'll seek out different terpenes for that and then you can vaporize them at your temperatures that you want. So this is the just getting the fullness out of your medicinal cannabis through vaporizing. Uh, what are some other temperature related ones? Flavonoids, no. Chemistry, cannabis. I love these pathway ones because this tells you how it works in the, in the bodies. So it goes down like CBD, for instance. It'll come down and it'll block the receptors of the CB1 and CB2 because it works with TPRV1 and what's the other one on the 5HT. So it just straight unlocks those ones so it'll continue those pathways. And those pathways link up with anti-inflammatory pathways in the body. So if we were to take any inflammatory tablets, it's unlocked in the same way as these. And you know, um, this is a terpene one and, and cannabinoid, All right? Been through that. This is back to this chart again. This is um, just a bit of a, it blows up a little bit further on the properties of the molecules, the cannabinoids. Let's go into benzene, warning, yep, smoke vapor. Terpenol, boronol, that's the warning one. But I don't think it's at 401 Fahrenheit. I think it's at 450 odd or 228 Celsius from my experience. That's what set my meters off in the past and I've got different tastes. Uh, and it makes me cough a lot harder and it gives me like a, puts a coating on my lungs. So when I cough, I get like a wheezing sort of effect afterwards. So that's what you wanna not have. That was the chart related to that. Family trees. All right, this is where it starts at. CBGA when it's made in the pathways of the plant and then it forms naturally and changes into THCA, CBDA, CBCA, CBGA. They're the daughters of it. And then when it's heated, you remove the acid form. It puts the little tail on the back so it becomes active. And then it changes into its forms. And then THC ages into your CBN, which I like CBN because it's, it's just so mellow. Any insomnia, any anxiety, anti emetic whatever that means e-m-e-t-i-c -E but it's really good you can also stick to the topic yeah and back to that cool stop sharing Let's see if anyone said anything well, we're back up to you cheers guys there it is monty you got worms in the lower section of that Pile. Don't know what you mean. That means sunshine. Sorry. Miss your appearance. Um, just scrolling down the chat. Yep, not much more to say. It seems in everyone's chatting internally. When's this plant going to be legal? Ask you every day. Well, hopefully at the end of the year, mate. And um, they're starting to do things, move, have movements in Victoria and Tasmania that are moving forward with um, political powers. There's a few people in parliament, parliaments in, that's sitting in Victorian parliament at the moment. There's two of them that rank highly in the Senate and they're medicinal cannabis users and they're promoting the use of it. So that's why we'll probably get past there first. And then hopefully other states will move on onto it. Yes. Hopefully it'll be federally, not just uh, here in the ACT legal. Oh, Nick S, what does it mean by aged for CBN? Um, I'll pull up the chart because he's referring to a chart. So after it's, when the trichome ages, allow screen to share. I should, no, I'm going to concentrate first because I'm going to make sure I get this right. No few problems today. Cannabinoid family tree. So this is what he's referring to. This is the cannabinoid family tree and just tells it how it's formed and then how you unlock the psychoactive by heating it. And I've showed you the charts from the temperatures before. And then it's it's aged. What, what does this mean? This means that after the THC molecule, it sits around for a while 
and its impermeous barrier around the edge of the trichome, the waxy oily coating around it, it's being penetrated and oxygen's gotten in and aged it and it's turned into CBN. So the molecule has changed its tail and it's naturally changed into CBN, which gives it different properties. So you're not going to get as much of a head high as you did before and it's going to be more of a mellow effect. Uh, you can, I've done this by aging, if you store cannabis, you can do it by storing it in airtight cryovac containers, Tupperware, whatever you store your stuff in, but it's got to be airtight with the air sucked out of it so there's no air remaining in it. And then store it in temperature, say room temperature, for three to four months. It depends when you pick it. Here's a good story. If you, and then it'll, to finish that, after three or four months, it'll generally be aged. You can speed it up by heating up a smidgen, um, maybe 50 Celsius, and it'll age it faster. So trichomes will go amber, you know, faster like that. You can see that they're aged. And it depends when you pick it. So if you're going to pick early, you're going to have to, it'll last longer until it turns to CBN. But if you pick late, that's when it'll change the CBN a lot quicker. The dispensaries in BC, when I was selling it to them over there under the ACNPR license that I worked under, they didn't want amber trikes. They, when they'd look under it in a microscope, they'd say, no, it's too overcooked, which means that they put it on the shelf and it only lasts six weeks on their shelf. And then it's it's changed its profile. It's changed uh, its terpene profile as well as its cannabinoid profile because it's aged into this CBN. But I like it because CBN works with my body. So you've got to do your experiments and see if CBN works with you so you know when to harvest your medicinal comp your medicinal cannabis as well. I hope that helps, Nick S. Thanks for the question. Uh, let me scroll up. There it is. What does it mean? Gobby Cannabis Vaporist. Hey, how you going? Oh, you'd be loving this, this um, particular episode, wouldn't you, mate? Have you got any questions about vaping? It's not going to be legal for any time soon. Cool and Luke, get on, mate. Uh, every day, I bought a mouse mat with this graph. Really cool. Oh, good. Yes, the graphs are so handy for medicinal cannabis. This is um, an episode you can look back on and pause some of the screens and take screenshots and really save some of this. Uh, some of these slides I've got. Very, very beneficial if you're into the medicinal side of it, particularly. What glass containers do you guys recommend? Twist tops or one with those e-jars with the plastic lining that clip on tight? Ah, excellent question, mate. Storage is so related to this because if you don't store properly, you're going to get the mixture of the plastics and they're going to react chemically also with oxygen to change your structure of your terpenes, flavonoids and cannabinoids. So I suggest, I, my suggestion is to go with glass tops and mason jars with uh, steel lids, like the ones that you have in those sources that you buy from the shops. So you go to your, um, to your Safeway or to your, your Coles or Woolworths, wherever you buy your, your, your food at, and they've got those pre-mixed sources that you can buy. Reuse them or go and buy, I used to get the bigger ones, so they'd be, what would they be? They'd be half, anyway, they were big ones, and they would did the same thing, and they had steel containers on the top. There's also good glass ones, which have glass containers on the top, which I've used too, which I like. They've got sort of a, a steel mechanism to open them on the outside with a, they've got a rubber lining on the inside. I wouldn't advise any plastics on the inside of it, because it might develop a plasticky taste, or they might exchange molecules. Even though it says it's high, def, high density plastic, I don't know if I'd trust it, mate. I'd stick with the glass with steel tops. It's it's never failed me. I've always retained all my trichote, my terpenes, flavonoids that I've wanted for durations. I'm talking about for six months, up to six, like at least six months. So I hope that helps you every day. Uh, g'day, g'days. It's your amber trucks, Nick. Okay, it's internal. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, here we go. Is a question. Have any of you guys vaporized cannabis to treat asthma? Great question. Uh, asthma, 
No, is the short answer. No, but a university in California did an extensive study on lungs with medicinal cannabis and found that they it actually increased their lung capacity over a duration of time if you're smoking it properly. And I'd suggest vaporizing it is the cleanest way to smoke it. Otherwise, edibles is probably the best way because it's going to do it, but it gives you different effects when it's metabolized through the stomach to when it's metabolized through the lungs. So um short answer no. I would only vaporize like you're doing probably, mate, for asthma because it's a lung condition. You want to really watch the temperatures to make sure they don't go too high so you don't unlock all these harmful toxins that are going to sit on your lungs and block up all your, what are they called? Capil no. What's in the lungs they call those little things? Cap capillaries and micro capillaries, is it? No. And something like that. Anyway, you don't want to block up all of those things. So medicinally, the best medicinal practices you could get for treating asthma with medicinal cannabis. Good question, mate. Thank you. Have you got any more questions too, Vaporizer? This is a pretty vaporizing show. Vaporizing, um, whatever it's called. Cool hand look. Oh, yeah. Oh, it does. Do you vaporize if you have a lung infection or bronchitis? It asks Gobby Cannabis Vaporist. So he says, do you vaporize? Do I vaporize if I have a lung infection or bronchitis? Well, yes, I've had them before. I get bronchitis when I was younger. And yes, but I just take little, I'd have smaller sessions. Uh, I might even, instead of having three bags, I might just have one bag uh, to try and reduce the amount that's going through my lungs. And if it's too heavy, if I can't, if I'm coughing too much and wheezing too much, uh, I wouldn't vape because that means your lungs can't handle it and you're probably going to hurt yourself. I'd look for extraction and some sort of edibles because they work just as effectively. The edibles, they do last a lot longer. And remember, with the edibles, you've got to take your weight at least one, one hour, an hour and a half, depends on your metabolism, before redosing. So do I vaporize with infection or bronchitis? So my answer is yes, but it's got to be reduced amounts. And it may be one bag instead of I'll do a three bag session. My sessions in my vaporizer are one at 293. I'll chop up a blend, which will normally fill half to three quarters of it, of the chamber. It will, I make my own bags too, so they're a smidgen bigger than the bought ones. I make them out of ocean oven bags to hold exactly three full lung breaths of me. So I'll have nine full breaths per session. My first session is at 193 Celsius. Second one is at 204. And third one's about 223 Celsius. I look at the trikes after that to see if there's anything left in there and there's very little. So extraction is useless. But if you're going to do it at a lower temperature, like if you had a bronchitis infection, you might do it at a lower temperature and waste a lot of it. You might want to retain, extract the rem remnants after that. Should sell some print tops of graphs, bro. So handy. Yeah, good suggestions every day, but they're um they're not mine. So I'd be counterfeiting or you know copywriting and stuff like that. So I don't mind teaching or showing other people them that I feel would feel uncomfortable making money off it. Even the um this university said a while ago, can you I write some courses on medicinal cannabis? And I said, well, slides alone take you know a couple of hours just to write one. They said, don't you have hundreds? I said, yeah, but they're not mine. And I'd feel uncomfortable sharing it or making making money off them is a better word. Cool hand. Yum, plastics, VOCs and phylates. Kill your swimmers. <laughs> Kill your swimmers. That's funny, cool hand, Luke. Here we go. Mason jars with rubber seals are good, especially the ambered colored ones. Ambered, yes, good suggestion. I didn't say that before. Amber coloured ones, they block out the UV light coming in, which break down your molecules inside of it. So the amber is more beneficial. Even though I don't, you should never put cannabis, medicinal cannabis in sunlight because for that reason, it'll start and break it down. The UV and the sun's rays break it down. So that's why, um, but I never put mine in the sun anyway. So it depends where you store them. But great point made. Thank you, Gobby Cannabis. 
at the wrist. Got told, Jebri Day says, to use the sources but can never get the smell out. Uh, that person hasn't experiment, hasn't done. Um, if you've got, well, here's another way. The ants, mate, the ants clean everything. So if you've got problems, put it outside with the ants and bang, there you go, they've just cleaned it for you. I've used them for, gosh, decades. And what you do is, yeah, it's true. If you're going to cook in it or use it and then straight away want to go and put your herb in it, good luck. It'll smell. But you have to leave it air out for a month. So leave it sit out in the air. It gets some sunlight into it. Let the UV start and break it down inside of it. Let the ants get into it. The other bacteria and fungi get into it and they'll just break everything down. So then you'll go back inside rinse it, wash it properly, it'll be clean as, mate. The jars, I, the lids I find retain the smell more so, not the jars. So the lids, you want to really clean them extensively well at the start and then put them in the sunlight for a month or not a month, depends where you are. If you're in a hot climate, it might only be a week or so. But if you're in a coolish climate, it might be, you know, one to two months. Every day, that's why I never bought the Mighty, the Path, to your mouth is plastic, never trusted it. Ah, yeah. Well, I can say that the, um, the mighty, that's a good point. But the by the time it gets to your mouth up there, and it's cooled down a lot. And it just, that plastic bit is a resin catcher, really. So I find with my mighty, which I do recommend the mighty as a smoking implement, it's, if you haven't got much money and can't afford much cannabis, it will really help you it's, it needs so little to get you so uh, to where you want, but it mightn't have the legs that you want. In other words, that you might have a good smoke, you'll cough, you'll get to, whoa, I'm so affected here, but it might only last you an hour. Where in my volcano, it might last me two hours because I use a little bit more in it, a little bit more cannabis in it. But it's um, very, very effective. But that's a point that Jeffrey Day makes is it has a plastic mouthpiece on it, and it does. But by the time it gets to you, its temperature is really cooled a lot and it's not grabbing any of that uh, that chemical reactions from the plastic. And also the plastic, it gets coated very quickly with all the resins that you're vaporising. When I clean my Mighty, it's got this amber-looking gooey stuff that you probably could reuse, but um, even under the microscope, it looks pretty good, but it also looks... You can see all the bits of dirt and hair and stuff like that that's picked up along the way. And I'm, I like medicinal properties, so it's helps for me. But everybody's different. You can do what you want. Cool and Luke reuses his coffee jars even. I don't drink coffee, but Cool and Luke loves that way. That's cool. Alpha beta penine is a cron. Oh, here you go. Is a um, for gobby. He asked something about a, is there any asthma uh, information for smoke vaporizing through asthma? Yes, you want to try and get the alpha beta pinene, says you every day. It targets your lung area. Your, so try and get cultivars with the monoterpene of alpha beta pinene. Yeah, bronchular. Oh, there it is next, down below. <laughs> yeah, I knew what you were getting at. Good on you, it's every day good advice. Yep, it said thank you. Nice manners. It's a mouthful, it's every day, yes. Cheers, Aussie CC. Hey, nice one. Glad to help, mate. Hey, you're kidding. Mace, this is a vaporizing episode. You have to rewatch it. It's, um, I've just gone through all the different charts and terpenes and cannabinoids on what temperatures unlocks and what harmful ones are and what safe practices are vaporizing is at. Nice to see you, Mace. Hope you're doing good today, brother. Hey, thank you. Glad to glad it helped. Van Diemen Adventures, how you going, mate? Here's another question. Interesting, says Jeffrey Day. If I want to just buy glass jars, go for some similar to tomato sauces in coals. Yeah, the mason jars, they're called. 
So um, you can buy them in heaps of sources or other products and then you can recycle them and use them yourself or you can go out and buy brand new ones. Usually, A good place to look at them is second-hand shops. They've got different sizes too for the mason jars to store your medicinal cannabis in. Oh, that's down the bottom. Right, oh, we're down the bottom. Nearly finished, I think. Yeah, Luke, jars are what I use. Oh, so Van Diemen Adventures also uses coffee jars. So they must clean out all right. And if you like the smell, well, why not infuse a bit? So if you, that's a good point. If you're into coffee, there's a cultivar in uh, Pacific Northwest called uh, oh, Koshu, no. It's a, co any, I can't remember. It's a, it's a coffee cultivar though, where they brought out that terpene. So if you like that terpene, you can put it, your cannabis in with it and it might infuse some into it too. So you can have a slight coffee hit. <laughs> Good size, abundance, easy to clean, yes. All right, is there any more? I'll wait a little bit more for some more questions to come through. I think it's been a pretty good um, stream today. I had major problems at the start, apologies. It'd be a bit to skip through. First, I started to not put my voice in and talk for a few minutes. And then second, I started to talk, not put and not share the screen. So you don't know what I was talking about. So I uh, think about, I don't know what minute it was up to, but I ended up eventually getting there. Sorry. And for that little tiny button down the bottom, that little cash button, that means for the sponsoring. So I appreciate for the couple of people that have helped and doing that. It's uh, the first sponsor was uh, for thank you. Then the second one was for sharing of my private slides that I've got. My playlists on my YouTube have thousands of hours of plant soil science and microbiology related to cannabis, medicinal cannabis. So I go through that for free for you guys. And the other thing on my money thing was $100 was to get one video call so I could help you out with something. And $300 was maybe aimed for a company or for a person who's going through medicinal cannabis problems where I could give you my professional opinions. So thanks for those who have helped. Tell your friends. <laughs> Good size. Hey, look at Scarecrow. How you going, Scarecrow? Hope you're doing well. Episode today, mate, was this one. It was all about safe vaping use. So I went through all different types of terpenes, cannabinoids, and um, flavonoids at their temperatures and which they are unlocked and what their properties do at different temperatures and safe temperatures to have them and what's the harmful temperatures to go up to if you're consuming your medical cannabis. So it's, um, yes, yeah, I hope you're doing well. See if there's any questions. So if you've got any questions on vaping more so, we're um, drop them now because the stream will be ending soon. Oh, it's cheers, nearly an hour. Cheers, legends. Says to every day, might just be a alpha pinning, have a research copy. Yes, it might just have one. Yes, all these different properties give all different medicinal benefits. Hey, Sonny. Oh, yeah. I got good results from turkey bags in Esky in a cool room. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. That's how I make my vapor, my volcano bags is out of turkey bags or oven bags, they call them in Australia. I had a problem in North America getting good turkey bags because you poor people have the oven bags with holes in them. They got these little microscopic holes in them and that's not good for making a volcano. I found it the hard way. That's probably what, anyway. Good on you, Amos. Cool and Luke, I will hope to join, oh, when I can. Oh, only, that's that's the buttons for, if you can't afford it, mate, because I'm, I'm poor, so if you can't afford it, I'm permanently disabled, so um, in my, I got problems with my hands and forearms. They seize up very fast. It can be quite painful some days. Um, so if you can't afford it, mate, definitely don't do it. I'm just here to help. I want to make people happy. Medicinal and teach or show people safe practices of consuming medicinal cannabis. What a gold mine of resources. Mate, it's a massive gold mine. My playlists are humongous. You can nearly type in something into the playlist and it'll give you related topics lectures on just that and this isn't me this is my private university lectures that i get that i'll put in my playlists and save for people like you guys to go back through 
and just to refresh on or to clarify or to learn the growth science and clarify from the bro science. The Vita packs, most important. Yes, you've got to have it stored at the right um, AW, water activity level. Otherwise, it's going to cause fungal problems. You don't want that. There was a contest in actually California again, only a few, a few months ago, that it got cancelled because the storage facility didn't store their samples correctly and they all got mould. <laughs> oh, that's just, yeah, so Bavita packs eliminate that. Post-harvest practices is often forgotten about with medicinal cannabis. Everyone grows it and they think, oh, yeah, cool, but it's just as important as growing it because if you don't finish it properly, you're going to get mould, you're going to get stuff that's going to lose most of its terpenes and flavonoids because they'll volatile off if your temperature will be too high. You can put it in the sun so you can lose, it can break down. So post-harvest productions are so important. Hey, good on you, Scare. I'm back doing lives. Scarecrow's doing lives, he says. There you go, if anyone's interested. Uh, cool, man, Luke. Ah, oh, that sucks, Aussie. I never got nerve damage in my arms and hands at have been giving me grip. You, you, I got nerve damage. Oh, you got it too, mate. Wow. I wear compression gloves that help first before I start and take um, something, induce something. So compression gloves, I can tell you, really work with me, mate. I don't know if you tried them. I get them specially made. They, um, they help heaps. And then medicinal cannabis is really good too. And I have to chop up mine... Remember back in the day, with our, we'd get 300 bucks for an extra utensil charge. So I didn't, I stopped using my little hand grinder, but I should get back to it to save my hands too. But what I do now is I just use the scissors and chop up extra amounts and leave it in my little bowl so I don't have to, if my hands are sore, I can just go and pack up and smoke quickly. Um, anyway, today was a really good stream, besides the first 20 minutes odd. But thanks everybody for rocking up. Save your questions for next week. No, no topic next week. Nothing. Wouldn't have a clue. So it's just an open stream. So save all your different medicinal cannabis things for next week and we can go and answer. What percentage, oh, hang on, I'll get on to this question first. What percentage Bavita pack is best? Depends what you like to consume it at, mate. Uh, there's, personally for me, I like the 58. I find that 62 is a bit too high. But if I'm going to store it long term, I might do 62. If you go above 65 activity water level, that's when uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a fungal genus that will germinate at 65% humidity. So you want to stay under that. So that's why the Vita make them at 62%. I think it's their maximum. So long term, I might, if I want to store for a few months, I might do a 62, but if, for my everyday smoke, it's a 58. But generally, I'll dry mine to perfection and I don't have to use bevitas. I will just keep it in its airtight bag until I'll put it into my jars and then uh, my jars will keep it retained. So... It's personal preference. If you look at my how to dry cannabis fast, there's a lot of comments under there saying to me that it's too high, the percent. My moisture level's too high, it's too low. You know, so it's personal preference. Uh, I'd like mine to smoke mine about 9% moisture level. Some people like it 13%, but you can't chop it up when it's 13. You know, try put, throwing it in the grinder or chopping it, it sticks to everything. So um, it's personal preference, mate. 58, 62, yeah. That's just what I like, though. Hey, good morning, Lene. How are you going? It's all right. That's some good tips. Thanks, Cool and Luke. 62 is almost too sticky to smoke. Yeah, see, it, it chops up. It combines everything. Um, it makes it all too sticky. So if you're going to try and chop it, it sticks together in the scissors or in the blender. It doesn't chop. It just bounces around in the blender. Um, so it's, yeah. I got sent some 62s once instead of 58s. I was so spewing because for that reason, it's what's the point? You know, I'm not storing this long term. I want a short term store. It was when it was a 
Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Hey, CSGO, it's good to see you again. Thanks, mate. All right, that looks like that's the show. So today was a very, very good vaporizing show and one good to know about the safe practices of it, how to get the best out of your medical cannabis if you're vaporizing it and the safest way to smoke it. So it is vaporizing. So consuming the safest way would be consuming it. But just uh, well, if you want to smoke it and blow something out, it's vaporizing is the best way so far for the lungs. Just waking up. Yes, that's no good. I'm all right. Finishing the show up. It's been an hour, six minutes, and there's no more questions coming through. I've given it a little bit, so I don't think there's many any more questions coming through. So I'm going to wrap it up. The start of the show was, wasn't very good today. It had a few problems. If you rewatch it, that's not the best. But anyway, I've got to try, and I am trying. So I've shared all those vaping things and seeing if there's any more questions coming through. Doesn't look like there is. So I'm going to wrap it up and say thank you. I appreciate everybody for being there and asking questions and stuff like that, just being there in chat in general. So it's really nice. And people that help me with money, sponsoring, stuff like that, I really appreciate that too. Really good. Not sponsoring, I've got no sponsors. But for those little money buttons underneath it that gets clicked every now and then, thank you. And I hope everybody today has... A good day and good evening or good night's sleep wherever you sit and listen to this or lay. And so happy breeding, happy growing, and good health to you. I'll see you in seven days. Bye-bye.